don't know if you can see this, but this is just starting to turn color right there. And uh, that's when I figure they're hot enough. Figuring we're somewhere close to Cherry Red. They take it, dump it down there in the bucket. Then heat the next one up. And as you can see, I've got a few of them done. All right. Enough of watching me heat these up. I'll come back. Okay, as a uh, uh, for a little pin mill, I bought this uh, this uh, rock tumbler, and uh, I'll be using that with these uh, rods in there. So it'll be a little rod mill. And the key to start cutting these off is so that they didn't reach to this point right here, which is the inner lip for this uh, lid to seal up against. So I've got uh, a bunch of rods that fit in there. I've already heat treated them, heated them up, and cool, uh, cooled them off. The heat treating was just to get rid of the oil. I wasn't too worried about anything else. If it happened to harden them up a little bit, that would be so much the better. Anyway, I'll throw uh, about a, a cup, two cups of uh, sand in there to run through the process, put the lid on, uh, throw a little bit of water in there for some lubrication and then uh, just let it run for a couple of days and we'll check and see if we can uh, crack some gold loose out of those concentrates. Okay, that's the plan. This is for the pin or the rod mill. It's just a simple little prototype. I don't expect it ever to, if it works well, I'll probably get a different setup and use it, but for the, just to test it out, see if it works, this is one of the tests. All right. Okay, what we have here is a tin can full of equal parts uh, uh, super magnetite or magnetite free black sand that I cleaned up real well. Run across the miller table three times so there shouldn't be no visible gold in it. But it's equal parts salt and sand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this stove over here, heat it up, get it nice and hot, then I'm going to dump it in a bucket of water and crack the sand and check that. So that's the other part of this test we're testing. So uh, rather than watching paint dry or any of that kind of fancy stuff, I'll, what I'm going to do is turn this off and uh, this is the setup that we're using. So I'll, I'll turn this off, heat it up, do the cracking and then uh, I'll come back and uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, the results on the Miller table. Alright, thanks. Well, this is the uh, other part of the testing. We're going to uh, run some uh, sand across here and try and collect all the gold over in here and try and show you the difference between each of the different treatments that we've used. This first batch of uh, material that we're going to run is uh, the uh, acid treatment or, or vinegar treatment on the sand. Uh, you've all seen, uh, if you've been watching my channel much, you've seen me run run uh, uh, sand on this Miller table so I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you how that looks because uh, you've seen a lot of that but, but suffice it to say that uh, what we're going to do is is collect the uh, whatever gold we've recovered back up in here the sand's been run across the Miller table three times so there's not much gold left in it hardly any at all and uh, any gold that I find now is just due to the treatment so we're going to do the, the acid treatment, we'll do the uh, rolling mill, the uh, little quarter inch rod in the rod mill, and we're going to do the uh, heat treatment uh, cracking to uh, and, and run those, and we'll compare the amount of gold we got left over from each of the three. So we'll just do it visually, uh, I'm not going to try and weigh it, there's such a small amount of gold here that it, it, it's, it, you can't even hardly weigh it. So. Uh, anyway, this is the way we're going to try and do it, so we'll see how this works out. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and process these, and as I do each one, I will put up a, uh, a, uh, a snapshot of how much gold was recovered in that one material. 
in all cases, uh, the amount of uh, material that we're going to be processing is about uh, this much. So in this in this uh, bowl, we'll have about that much sand in there. I wet the sand down when I run it, so uh, uh, we'll see how that works. All right, good enough. This is still running uh, some of the uh, vinegar treated material and uh, I'm looking at the size of it and I'm, uh, I'm collecting some back over here, not much, uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of amazing to me is that this stuff looks like it's the same size as the stuff I collected earlier, uh, but there just seems to be just a little bit more of it, not a lot but a little bit more of it. So the vinegar seems to have uh, done a little bit of something for us on this. I'll, uh, I'll finish, uh, finish up what I'm doing here and we'll, uh, we'll take a picture of it and show you how big the pile is. <laughs> and I'm being real gratuitous when I say power. pile. It's a, it's a small little smudge. Alright, we'll come back. Now this is the uh, rod mill sample and uh, one of the things that uh, I don't know if you'll be able to tell from, from watching there, but uh, when I put a uh, new spoonful of material on here, watch how fast this cleans off. The, the one, one big notice or one big difference I can see between this and the acid is, is that for the same material, this stuff has been refined or it is beat down to a smaller, smaller size. So, so the, uh, the black sand, or the, the the sand that's in here is very, very fine and, uh, and, and it processes down the table very quickly compared to uh, what the acid did. Uh, the acid uh, didn't change the size of the material that much, but running it through the uh, rod mill, uh, that, that knocked the uh, sand down, the crystalline structure, but the gold didn't change because gold is just malleable and it just got kind of beat up a little bit. I noticed there's a little bit of fine gold in there, but not much. Um, Looks pretty good, so when I get done running all this uh, sample, then uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how much uh, gold I got from there.